This is Drom Shakasuto. It's written in the book of visions of Rabbi Chaim Vital that he saw a handwrite from a righteous man that explained the way the nation of Israel were pronouncing the holy name of the Creator in the days of the Temple. Today in our days we're not pronouncing, saying out loud the name that is written in the four letters of Yud K Vav K. We're not allowed to say that name. But in the earliest days, in the earlier days, the Israeli people were using that name inside the temple. They were allowed to. But in the Hebrew language, the ancient, la ancient language, you write letters and also vowels. You put dots and signs above and under the letters. And that's the way you will pronounce those letters. And it's written that the letters without the vowels are like bodies without a soul. Means that you can have a word, for an example, the word az, it's written with ein and zain. If you will put patach under the letter ein, so you're going to say az, it's a strong person, a powerful person, it can be even a brazen person. But if you're going to put tzere under the letter ein, letter ein, it changed the way you read and pronounce that word, and it will be as, as is a goat. Same letters, different vowels, different meanings. So the meaning of the word is the intention of the word, that's the soul, that's the spirit. It gives life to the word. Now Rabbi Chaim Vital said that he saw in that handwrite the way that Am Yisrael were pronouncing the word Yud Kei Vav Kei and how it was pronounced like the vowels that you write under the word Ahava. Ahava means love. The way that you put the vowels under the word Ahava you take the same vowels and you put them under the letters Yud Kei Vav Kei. And that's how Am Yisrael were pronouncing the name of heaven, the name of the Creator in the Temple. Why am I saying it? What's the importance of it, if any way, we're not allowed to say today? That soon to come, we will be allowed to say it. And Mashiach will come and open the gates and the doors for the Holy Temple. And everyone will call him in his name. And his name is Ava. That's the name of the Creator. Every person in the universe must understand what's his role in the redemption that is about to come. Because it's one thing to be religious and to follow rules, and to obey, and to fulfill your obligations, and to try to please everyone all the time. This is one thing. But to have a real meaning for your life, and to have a purpose, to have a desire for life, and a passion for what you do, is a whole another thing. Thank you. I explained a few times that when the Creator will uncover His beauty and will reveal His glory to the wide world, so all the creation will shine His grace and His beauty outside to the world. It means that 
everything will shine. Everything will show its good. All the animals will help and will cooperate and run together, do their things, everyone with its qualities. For an example, let's say today, a farmer, how many hours and days and months a year he needs to go and seed and plant and, and do his work in the fields. And the animals are coming, the mice, the rats, the, 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 the squirrels, the, the hamsters, you call those? They're coming and destroying his work, like he needs to struggle in every aspect of his life. Like he wants to seed, he needs to plow first, he needs to dig the ground, and the ground is dry. He needs to water, and rains are not coming, so he needs to spend money on water, and he needs to put, and the, the ground itself, the earth, doesn't have all the power, so he needs to buy all the materials and the things that are needed for the, for the, for the, for the, all, all the crops to grow and then he needs to, to make sure that it's all washed and he needs to watch from all the insects and, and, and germs and animals that will come and eat all, all, all the fruits and he, then he needs to harvest and to keep it dry or wet or cold or hot or whatever. It's a whole crazy process for that poor farmer that just tries to bring some food to his house now. When the redemption will come, if that person has a real passion to be a farmer, he really likes that job, that's his heart, that's his desire. So that's what he will do, and he will do it gladly. He will be happy to do it. But all the creation will help him, will assist him. Means that the water will come in the right time, the rain will come, and the ground will open itself for those seeds. And he wouldn't have to go and start putting every seed in its place. The animals will cooperate with him. The animals, the same mice that he hated with all his heart, will be his best friends now. They will take the grains and will run with it in the fields, and they will seed it for him. And you're going to see the creation function in unity. The person that loves skateboard, he will see the world in its greatest beauty. Means that the wide world will be those skateboards, I don't know how you say it in, in English, my English is broken. Yeah. What? All those, all those like um, ramps, ramps and, and, and all the, those trails and paths and ways that they are driving and jumping and like, Everything will be set just for him, like he will, that will be his world. And everyone corresponding to his desire, that the world that he will see. Because think about your life today. Your life are going through your mind all the time. You're thinking. But what are you thinking? You're thinking of what did you see in your life? You have certain thoughts when you see certain people, you have certain opinions in certain situations. When you come into that street, so you think that thought. And all your inner world is responding to what you sense, to what you see. And not only that the outside world is reflecting your mind, if you will look deep, reflect into your mind, if you will look deeper, you will see that your mind is being reflected outside in the same time. It's like a two sides mirror. It's one thing, the world and your mind, because even though that we're all living in the same world and everyone are finding themselves together, meeting, talking, enjoying, spending time, shaking hands, in reality, every single one of us is experiencing the world from a totally different angle. You see your world and I see mine. And I cannot see your world. Even if we're looking at the same picture, we see a whole different scene. You're going to describe it and it will fit to my ears. I will understand that we're talking about the same thing. But really, in your mind, you will see totally different things. This picture will reflect something else for you. It will remind different things for you. It will come from a different place and it will take you to a different place. And it's the same picture on the same wall. But we're looking at it from different angles and we see a whole different world. Now, 
Now in our days, when we're still in the exile, we cannot see the glory of heaven, the beauty, the individual precise supervision of the Creator on every single one of us, on every moment, on every person, on every conversation, on every fabric, on every a string in, in your shirt, on, 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 on every thread, on every fiber in, in the table. The Creator supervised and decided to put that one here for a reason, for a purpose. It might be that all the threads in your shirt, all the strings are coming from one country and only one of them is coming from a different one. And why the Creator did it like that? He knows why. It's holding certain sparks, certain powers that you're not aware to, that you don't understand, that are needed for your balance, that are needed for your completion. And the Creator, He knew exactly how to balance you in that way. That in your salad you'll have five cucumbers and th three of them will come from one field and another two will come from a different field. Maybe even from a different country, from a different area in the world and you need to eat them now and parts will come to your plate and different parts will come to the plate of your friend and only the Creator can see that and He's the one to run that and to manage that and to make sure that the creation will function in, a, in, in complete balance but our eyes in our days are blocked and sealed to see that perfection but when the curtain will rise and we will see the glory of heaven and we're talking about the days of redemption, then we will see how every particle in the creation works in perfect sync with the rest of the world. Every part and part in the creation will show to the world, to the wide, whole wide world, how the Creator Himself is running it, how the Creator's will is being expressed through it. Means that, like I gave those examples, in the first redemption, when the nation of Israel were supposed to go out of Egypt and there was no other choice except of opening the sea for them, so the Creator opened the sea for them for that moment. But when the redemption will come, that power that been revealed one time when Am Israel went out of Egypt for them to cross and for their enemies to drown over there, that power will be revealed in every moment, in every opportunity, in every time that it will be needed for the satisfaction and the joy of His beloved ones. For those chosen ones that will be, will take part of the redemption, for them the godliness will be revealed in every ocean, in every lake, in every river, in every cup of water. If you will need something, it will pop up, it will come to you. If you will want to see dolphins, dolphins will come to the shore. If you will want to ride horses, the best horse in the world, the same one that you desire to ride on, will wait for you one step away from you. Like you're going to see how everything is moving based on the will of heaven. And it's so fantastic and so great because all the dreams of all the people in the same time will be fulfilled. Now that's the purpose that for it we should follow Hashem and commit ourselves to Him and not for the pleasure of it. Because that's the only way that His honor, that His greatness can be revealed to the world. Because now in days of darkness, when our eyes are blocked and sealed, we cannot recognize His beauty. And therefore people can say horrible things about the Creator and can even wonder if He's exist at all or not and argue about it for days and years and months and lifetimes and not to surrender to His kingship. Because really it's hard to see. It's very hard to recognize because of the darkness. You cannot blame a person for his lack of faith. It's written on Abraham that when Hashem gave him faith, when he believed in Hashem, in the Creator, so the Creator 
blessed him with faith and Abraham himself gave the credit for that faith to the Creator. He didn't say to himself, yeah, I'm a believer, yes, I know God, yes, I know, I recognize, I know His ways. He didn't thought any good thought like that, a, 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 was proud of himself to believe. He saw that gift, that blessing of faith to him as a free gift from heaven, as a generosity. He felt that the Creator made charity with him, gave him faith. Here, believes in me, believe in me. When the Creator bless the person, the person has faith. When the Creator takes that blessing, the person cannot see Hashem anymore. That's Hester Panim. That's when Hashem is hiding His face. The Creator hides His face. Now when the redemption will come, all those coverings will disappear and we will be able to see the face of heaven. We're all going to see Hashem. Now also the temple will be the house of Hashem for all nations. Because my house will be called the house of prayer to all nations. Means that all people from four wings of the universe will all see that. Will all understand it. A huge and great awareness will come down to the world and will open the hearts of all people, of all animals, of all creations. All the creation will show His godliness, will accept it, will love it, will bless it, and will work corresponding to that illumination that will shine from within. Now that's the purpose that for it we should all serve and commit our lives to. Because just to be religious, just to follow some rules, that's not the will of heaven. The Creator is not willing for us to be stuck in our condition today. The Creator wants to bring all of His people, all of His beloved ones, to that place that they will inherit the worlds, that they will lead the creation by their desires. Like that it's written, Tzadik Moshe Lir'at Elohim, the righteous man, he's the one to lead Hashem, to lead the Creator. How does he lead the Creator? Because Retzon Yere the Creator fulfilled the will of the believers, of those ones who believes in him. Moses is asking something, Hashem comes and do that thing for him, and he tells him, I'm doing it for you, because you asked me. Abraham is asking, Asking a question, Hashem comes down from heaven and answers. Elijah the prophet and all the righteous ones, one after the other, Esther HaMalka, she's asking, whatever you want shall be done. All the questions, all the requests, all the holy desires are being answered. Now in that future to come, that is about to come in a second, in a minute, we need to live in that faith that it can take place right now, that that's the reality, that's the real heavenly will to reveal His greatness down to the world, to reveal His unconditional love to all of His creations. Now the Creator Himself, when He wants to do that, He wants to do it to all of His beloved ones. And who are those beloved ones? It's everyone. Those are everyone's. Everyone, it's written, Lanchil o Havai, yes, the Creator wants to, to inherit, to bring down to, the, to His beloved ones, to those one who loves Him, the understanding that there is a Creator, that the Creator Himself is life and exists, and He is able to do whatever you wish, whatever you want. And like we said, you like skate, skateboard, you're going to have the base skateboard in the world, all your friends will be there, all the champions will be there, you'll make the best tricks in the world, you're never going to fall, everything will fly for you, it's going to be just fantastic, it's going to be enormous, that you cannot imagine the fun and, and the happiness that you'll have in your life, and corresponding to your holy desire, to your will, to how, what's your passion? You want to sail to Jerusalem, to the temple? You'll have the best boat ever, like you cannot imagine a yacht like that. Never saw something so gorgeous and beautiful, and there's going to be space for everyone. 
And we're talking about a moment that is after the resurrection of the dead. We're talking about a moment that everyone are with us, that we brought them back, that our faith, that our inner honest request for redemption been answered, that all of our tears of generations, the blood and the sweat and the sorrow, the pain, the screamings, the cries into the night, all the holocausts and all the exile, all the loss and all the horrible feelings, all the prayers, all the requests, all of them as one been accepted and the sky been opened. And the bounty came down already and all the ancestors, the, ho all, all the forefathers, the, 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 the mothers, the holy righteous ones, everyone, every single simple person that lived on earth is coming back to, to, to our space, to our reality. You see everyone around you. Everyone you wish to see, everyone you want to meet, everyone you feel like you had to hug him for years, he's coming toward you with his arms open, wide, just to see you again, just to show you the love of the Creator, to answer all your needs, all your requests. Those are not dreams. And it's also not a prophecy. That is the promise that the Creator promised us from the first place, from the beginning. That with you, Abraham, the Creator told him, all families on earth will be blessed. We're talking about all families on earth, except of the enemies of Hashem, except of those horrible people, those enemies, those demons that are dressed like humans, only the real evil ones, those ones with no conscience, with no love, with no passion to do no good, those dark ones will go down, will disappear underground. You won't experience them anymore. You won't miss them. You won't lose look back. You will enjoy prosperity for thousand years and then to eternity. One thousand years with no death. One thousand years with no illnesses. One thousand years with no pain, sorrow, struggles, no kind of darkness. Even the nights will shine and illuminate like the brightest day. No one will die. We need to bring it into our heart, into our minds. We need to wake up to understand the Creator's purpose in the creation of the world. Why He did it in the first place, only for one purpose. To reveal His unconditional love on His creations. So we failed very fast in the beginning and we failed more and more during the generations. But all that was already planned. All that process that took place in our lives was part of the world's history. But that history of 6,000 years of labor and a little bit less than that, because Shabbat were accepting the seventh day a little bit earlier before its time, so a little bit earlier before 6,000 years will pass from time of creation, like it's written in the Holy Bible and the books of truth, Shabbat will come. Which kind of Shabbat? The 1,000 years of redemption. After 40 years of Mashiach, we're entering into that world of Shabbat. And we're talking about days of happiness, of glory, of pleasure, of satisfaction, of all your dreams come true. And all the nations, all the people, all the animals are walking together to the holy city of Jerusalem, to the holy land of Israel, to see the face of heaven, to visit in his house, the house of prayer for all nations. And everyone are united. Everyone with one passionate heart to keep God's will, to call Him in His name, to praise Him and to praise those righteous ones that opened the path, the way for salvation, for that redemption that came. All their hearts will be full of gratitude. 
All the hearts will be full of appreciation and will just want to express their, their happiness and their satisfaction. And they will just look for words to express it. And we're talking about hundreds on hundreds of millions of people that are all cooperating and making each other happy, supporting each other and doing only good, all the animals. We're talking about mountains standing on the sides of the hills. Birds are flying beside you. Thousands and millions of butterflies making the view so beautiful and colorful in every aspect of the world. Your clothings will be the best things that you can imagine. You never had a suit like that in your life. Your hair will be fixed perfectly. Your fingernails, you'll have the best shoes, best boots, best sandals, whatever you like to wear. You'll have it with the best belt, best sunglasses. Whatever you will want, you'll have. Your hungry food will come to your hands. That's the promise of heaven. That's the promise that the Creator gave to all the prophets, that there will be no one left behind. Like that Jacob was not able to eat one meal after Joseph disappeared, after Yosef, his child, went and he couldn't find him. It shown to us the heart of the Creator. The Creator is not eating and not drinking. The Creator's eyes are full with sorrow and his tears are falling down to the the ocean to the large sea. The Creator is hiding in that hidden place and screaming and roaring three times every night for the destruction. And he regrets. And he regrets on that decree that he himself decreed. And he told us himself, he said, what are we saying when we're accepting Shabbat? What the Creator said. What the Creator said to us, and we're mentioning it in every eve of Shabbat, before we're accepting Shabbat, the Creator said, I'm waiting. No one is able to say? Or Avraham, I told you. Do you remember? Asher nishbati bapi. I made that oath when I was angry. Im yevoun el menuchati. If they will come to the place of rest, if they will enjoy, if they will come to their houses, to their homes, how can you understand that decree? First of all, the Creator is saying to us, First thing the Creator is telling us, Asher nishbati be'api. I made that oath when I was upset. We know halachically that if a person made an oath, by the rules of Judaism, of the Bible, of the Torah. If a person made an oath while he was under pressure, when he was angry, when he was upset, you can cancel that oath. It doesn't count. It doesn't mean anything. That oath is empty oath. It doesn't hold no power. Why? Because you were under pressure. You didn't have a choice. Someone puts a gun to your head and tells you, make an oath that you're never going to keep Shabbat. I swear, I swear. All right, now. It doesn't mean anything. First Shabbat you should keep. It doesn't mean anything because you had a gun to your head. If now a person is tending and saying, me, I'm not going to this, I'm not going to that, start making oaths, it's a problem because he's doing it out of his good will, out of his free will. But when a person is under pressure and the Creator himself explained to us that he was upset and he made that oath under those judgments, he revealed to us that that oath expired, doesn't have the power anymore. And then the next part of that sentence that we're mentioning every eve of Shabbat. Im yevoun el menuchati. If they will come to the place that they will rest in, means to their good place, to their the promised land, whatever. If, if is maybe yes, maybe no, they will come to that place. There is no no in that sentence. There is no real meaning in that oath. The Creator, when He decreed that decree and He was upset, He didn't say anything in the end of the day. He didn't close the door. 
He made a show. He shown to everyone that he is angry. He took out his anger on the house. He broke the house. He burned the house. People died. There was a huge fire. Am Israel, the nation of Israel, went to the exile, to weird exile, to weird sorrow and pain and darkness. But in the end of the way, the Creator in every darkness was there with them, accepted their prayers and collected their tears and put them all in his bag. And in the day to come, he will come. In the day of revenge, he will make the revenge. Kel Nekamot Hashem, God of revenge will finish the war. He will remove all the darkness. He will reject all the evil. He will push away all the forces of darkness and evil. And He will reveal His loving kindness on all the ones who loved Him ever. In all the generations, everyone will stand up back to life. Everyone will hold hands together. The human race will be united. Everyone will accept his kingship. And we're talking about those hundreds of millions, maybe billions and billions of people through all the generations. Everyone will rise. It will be such a wonder. It's going to be such a miracle that the sky will be open and the sights that we will see with our eyes will be impossible to describe. We cannot imagine the beauty and the glory that the Creator will reflect to us in every moment and moment for eternity. And for a thousand years of spiritual development, we will rise and rise and rise. And after one thousand years, we will not be part of physicality anymore. We will be so spiritual already that we're just going to rise to infinity and become one again with our beloved Creator as one soul like we were before creation, just with all that amazing knowledge of this worldwide experience of six and then the seventh thousand years of completion, of that mission of serving Him under judgments, of sacrificing ourselves for Him, trying again and over and over and not backing off and not giving up. And that's the challenge. We need to bring back to our awareness that the Creator is the source of power. That the Creator Himself, He is that one that owns the creation. He is the one that puts the will, the thoughts in the hearts of all the creations. He can make the animals not be upset and angry at each other and on us anymore. To become best friends, cooperating and helping each other. You need a medicine, you need a cure, you need a potion, you need food. Birds will bring it to your doorstep. They will knock on your window and here it's there waiting for you and it's not an imagination all the prophets were talking about it and they said that the wolf will spend his life with that deer they will be best friend and the, 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 the keves with the sheep and the wolf and the, the, the tiger and everyone are happy all together and that's the power of the Creator when He runs the world based on goodwill with no judgments, based on unconditional love that will be revealed. And that day is a day that is about to come. That day is not something that we're dreaming of. That day is something that we need to believe. And if you will believe, you will believe, be believed. Im ta'aminu te'amenu. If you have faith about something, people will believe you on that. But if your faith is weak, you cannot sell it to no one. If you don't believe in the product, you cannot sell it. But if you have a strong faith, and you go with that passion, and you go and talk people to it, they see in your eyes that you say the truth. That you're a truthful person and they will take it from you. Because words that comes out from the heart enters into the heart of the one who listens.
And you should work on your faith to remind yourself and to wake yourself up to that belief, to that simple understanding that the Creator was and is and will, and He owns all the powers, and He creates the world as He wish, as He wants. And when the time will come, and all those amazing people that are putting effort will come to that achievement that is needed from them, that point of humility, that deep understanding of how important it is to be honest, a little bit more righteous, a little bit more pure. Everyone, based on his path, on his life story, there are certain achievements that every one of us should still achieve. And in the moment that we will reach, and we don't know how close we are, we might be five minutes away from that. We might be two days away from it. We don't know. And when that moment will come, the sky will open. And we will see all together godly sights, visions. You'll have the power to climb above gravitation, above time. You will live forever. If you will want to fly, you'll be able to fly. You'll be above the powers of nature. All the creation will function based to your will. You're willing to drink Sprite, you'll have Sprite. Coke, Coke. Beer, you'll have beer. Whatever you want, you'll receive. You want to see the face of the righteous ones? Here they will stand in front of you to bless you for a moment or more. Depends in your vessels. Depends in your power. You're going to see them. Everything will be coordinated by heaven. Everything will be perfectly supervised by the Creator and the armies of heaven. All the angels will stand in one side. There will be no more battle between kindness and judgments. No more chesed in one side and gvura in the other. Everything will function as one. All the creation will show the glory of heaven. And we need to bring that faith into our heart. We need to bring that deep understanding into our minds that we will be those believers. And who are those believers? You're going to say, oh, maybe it's the level of those righteous ones. Maybe it's the level of those pillars of fire. I'm not one of them. The Creator said, Le'anchil o Havai yesh. He wants to inherit His existence to the ones who loves Him. If you love Him in your heart, even in one point, it calls love. And you will have the merit to pronounce His name with those vowels that will show His glory. Because the intention of your heart will be the right intention to call Him in His name. After the redemption, all those ones that will remain, that will stand in that amazing sight, will go to say the name of heaven, will go to praise Hashem, will go to accept His face in the holy city of Jerusalem, in the holy temple of, 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 of the world. When people will come there, those will be those ones that have been chosen by Him. Means they will be those ones who have been called the one who loved Him, or Havav, the ones who loves Him. And they will know exactly based on what they've been redeemed. Because He will pay the reward. He will give everyone His love. He will show His kind face to every single one. You sit in your house, you sit in your room and you're broken as hell. And you don't know what you do with your life. You know why? Because you don't give yourself the credit for being who you really are. You keep on hating and blaming yourself based on other people's opinion. You're criticizing and judging yourself because you don't stop comparing yourself to other people 24 hours a day. And that's why you feel so poor and broken. Because you cannot be taller than how you are. And you cannot have more money than the amount that the Creator gave you. And you cannot have different colors than the colors that the Creator painted you with. Cannot have different eyes, different sound, different accent, different families. Those are, those are not things that you can control. 
and that desire to change reality is coming from that ancient lie of the snake that told Adam and Eve that they can be different and made them passion the, the, the fruit of knowledge, told them you can be like someone else, you can be different, and then they started to desire that. But that's a mistake. That's the main mistake that the person is desiring to be someone that he is not. When there is only one possibility, opportunity for you to be who you are. You cannot be no one else. And every temptation, every offering that the evil inclination suggests you, try to be like him, try to do like that, maybe you should go there, follow your eyes, follow your lusts and your desires, makes you lost from being who you are, from recognizing your true self that is your inner soul. When you will come to that understanding that you are who you are and going to recognize the godliness that is treasured inside of you, your own beauty, your talents, your qualities, your sensitivity, your sense of humor. Even if you haven't found enough people to laugh from your jokes, you laugh from your jokes, you find it funny, that's your sense of humor. The Creator gave it to you and you are funny. When you're laughing, He's laughing with you. When you're happy, He's happy with you because He's not being judgmental on you like you are, like people are. The Creator, He loves us and unconditionally love, love with no terms. And when that love will be revealed to the wide world, there will be no more judgments, there will be no more arguments. And you inside your heart, you know that you love Hashem. You know that you love the Creator. That's why you try to learn His wisdom. That's why you try to come closer to His people. That's why you love the righteous ones. That's why you try to work on your attributes and to be nicer to people. That's why you try to give more charity and you try. And you try to keep Shabbat and you try to eat kosher. You try to follow the rules. Sometimes you find it hard. Sometimes you find it impossible. But all those difficulties, all those obstacles, all those challenges that are surrounding us are only the result of thousands of years of exile because we've been drained because we've been attacked we have been hurt abused insulted killed ashamed for years for generations so our self-esteem is so broken and so low that we cannot recognize our true selves but the Creator, He knows our inclinations. And He knows our heart. And He's asking from us only for one thing. Only the heart. Rahmana li babai. The Father of mercy, He wants the heart. So you need to find your heart and to reveal it. In which way you're going to serve Him with your heart? Through prayer. Pray for your desires, for your goodwill, for your hopes. Go and talk to the Creator like you talk to your best friend, to Father of Mercy, to someone who knows you, who knows how much you want Him, how much you desire and how impossible it is. He knows it. But you don't believe yourself that you are as good as you know that you are. You keep ignoring yourself and hating yourself and blaming yourself for the results of the exile. Not your punishments, your fault, your mistakes, your failures. No, they are not. They are the result of the decree of the Creator that he brought down darkness to the world. And what will happen before the redemption? We are all doing tshuva. We're all giving ourselves a chance. 
We're apologizing. We're trying to fix. On daily basis, we're doing something good. We're trying to be more honest, nicer to our families, to our friends, to our communities, to the world, to ourselves, to heaven, to the Creator. Now, if a person once upset you and he hurt you so badly that you decided not to talk to him ever again, and that's it, you're not talking. Let's say that person now comes to you, knocks on your door, start apologizing. He will ask forgiveness once and twice. You're not opening the door for him. Never. Let's say that he begged for hours. That person is standing for hours on your doorstep and keep on begging and he's crying. In the end, you'll open the door. In the end, you'll tell, even if you're so upset, you're going to open the door and gonna slam it again in his face. After another few hours, you'll open the door again. If he will not give up on asking for mercy, you will answer with mercy. Now, let's say that you forgive him. Let's say that you told him, you know what, I see that you're honest, you really hurt me, you're gonna give it to him, and he will accept the rebuke, and he will take it all the way, and you will clean your heart and your conscience, and everything will be fixed. But let's say that he's keep on crying, and he's begging, but no, you cannot forgive me. I did a horrible thing. What that I've done to you was the worst in the world. I will never forgive myself for that. How would you feel then? Who will start feeling bad with himself now? You. How can it be? It's crazy. But that craziness will take place in the redemption day. The Creator told us, Shuvu elai v'ashuva elchem. When you will come back to me, I will come back to you. When we will finish our comeback, when we will come back to ourselves and really going to desire him and really going to regret on those days that we left him, on all of our stupidities following our lusts and our bad desires, our sadness and our arrogance, when we will regret on all of that and we will do tshuva and we will bring that tshuva to him and we will apologize to him, he will apologize to us. He will come back to us. And if you find it hard, oh, that crazy Rav Dror is talking his craziness again, I'll tell you guys, it's written that the Creator Himself regrets on the exile. And He's doing tshuva. And He's saying, Have you, alai kapara, you need to bring a sacrifice to atone my mistake. And he's saying that he regrets on destroying the temple and exiling his children, sending them to the exile. And the Creator himself is saying that he regrets on the fact that he minimized the moon and brought down the evil inclination, the Yetzirah to the world, and complete darkness and, and, and powers of evil to the world. The Creator, he regrets on that. And he's apologizing, but he needs that wise person to atone. That one to come, Mashiach to come, to break his vowel, to break his oath that he said, Im el menuchati. That righteous man will come and will find the Creator way out of that oath and will break his vowel. And then the Creator will be set free again. Because as for now, he is Melech Asur Birhatim. He is a king that his hands are tied. He is handcuffed to the peaks, to the edges of our mind. Rehitei Hamuchin, to our minds, to the way we think. If we are negative, the Creator is there. If we're angry, the Creator is there. If we're sad and depressed, the Creator is stuck over there in our minds. But when we will do tshuva, we will rise up above those bad attributes. And our hearts will be full of joy, full of holiness and purity. And then in that moment, the Creator Himself will come back to us. And then He will heal all the wounds. 
and then he will give money to all the needy ones, to everyone who needs. He will recover everything. He will fix all the gaps, all the bridges, all the cracks, all the ruins, all the horrible things that took place will be balanced again. Everything will come back to its perfection. And that's the redemption day. And for that day, we need to work. And when that day will take place, today, if we will listen to His will, listen to Him, it's to listen to the inner voice of our souls that are talking to us from within, that are calling us to believe in ourselves, to recognize the beauty of our creation, of who we really are, how kind we really are, how nice we want to be. How relaxing and loving and supportive we want to be to all of our beloved ones, to all people, to all the cute animals in the world, to reveal our wisdom and our hidden talents, not to be shy and embarrassed anymore, to tell jokes and to dance and to sing and to, and to make our arts and to write and, and, to, and, and to walk and to dress as we feel and as we feel comfortable with and to be who we are. We need to believe in ourselves, to recognize the good intentions of our heart and to let them shine to let the good qualities, the beauty of our soul shine and illuminate the world with our qualities, with who we are. The way to do it is to be brave, is to be strong, is to fight for yourself. It's to be who you are and not to be ashamed of who you are. Is to reveal your qualities and to announce to the world that you are who you are proudly happily, in a humble way, just really to be who you are, not to show off and to present and to do, make noise, to be who you are, just to allow your inner voice take place in the outside world as well, not only in your mind, not only in your feelings that are closed and sealed, that you will allow yourself to express your thoughts, to say your heart, to reveal your feelings, to share your wisdom and your sensitivity with the world. That's the blessing that the Creator blessed us with. And I bless you all to believe in yourselves and to recognize those sparks of godliness that are treasured inside of you and to go and to reveal that to the wide world that everyone will enjoy your power and that we will all be able to enjoy each other for good. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.